And the answer is very clear. Nehru was at a place called University of Cambridge. Mahatma Gandhi was at University College London. Sardar Patel was at Middle Temple in the UK. And Ambedkar was at a place called Columbia University. The reason why I tell you that story is because the journey of some of these great nation builders, great leaders, could not have been complete without the kind of education that they received. But that begs another question, and that is that an entire generation went to Cambridge and to Columbia. An entire generation went to Middle Temple and University College London. What made a Gandhi or an Ambedkar stand out? And the answer is simple enough that they were able to merge their educational journey and their personal journey with India's national journey. They were able to see what the need of the hour was in our country and we were fighting for independence, the skills that they had, the expertise that they had gained, the experiences they had from their travels and dialogues around the country. They were able to bring it together and march for freedom, fight for it, galvanize people for it. And we are indebted to that generation of great nation builders, that generation of leaders, who in the Indian thought oftentimes we call servant leaders. Swami Vivekananda talks about servant leadership as dasa se dasa, servant of the servants. That when we attain a position, it is about people. That when we are assigned a responsibility, it is so much more about those who we have set out to lead and serve than the positions that we hold ourselves. And that is exactly what that generation of freedom fighters did. Names too many that I cannot go on to name right now as I speak. Then there was another generation in our country. In 1947, when we got independence, the world was looking at India with doubt. Many times they wondered whether we'll succeed as a nation, whether we'll be able to feed an entire population, send it to school, take care of its health, grow enough crops. And in 1947, a generation of young Indians began returning to our country. A young graduate from the University of Cambridge set foot in Delhi and told the first prime minister that space should not be the fortress of Soviet Russia and the United States alone that India too can become a space power. And it was in the education of a Vikram Sarabhai that today we launched space missions for a quarter of a budget that Hollywood takes to launch space movies. It was in 1948 that a young gentleman returned with an education in dairy technology from Michigan State University, went to the sleepy town of Anand in Gujarat and worked for five decades and nine prime ministers on a billion liter idea. In 1948, when Dr. Kurian had returned to India, we were struggling to provide milk to our growing population. In 1998, we overtook the same United States of America that Dr. Kurian had returned from, and India had become the largest producer of milk in the world. When, when we look at India's public infrastructure, when we look at our national security, when we look at India in any foray that we can imagine, it was the education of a Kalam, that provided us national security at one point, the education of the metro man of India, E. Sridharan, that helped us build our public transport and infrastructure, education of an M.S. Swaminathan that heralded a green revolution in this country. The reason why I talk about that generation that came right after freedom is because there was a generation yet again that was able to bridge the gap between its education and leadership and contributed directly to nation building. As I stand here today, as we walk into our 75th year of political independence, India needs another generation of servant leaders. Many young, many old, but each one deeply committed and invested into taking India to greater heights. We have achieved political freedom. We have achieved green security and milk security and a range of social securities for our citizens. And yet more work needs to be done. We need to make our education as accessible as interesting we need to make our healthcare as affordable as reliable. We need to make sure that agriculture and science can go hand in hand. We need to make sure that the same science and math and algorithms that make our life on the internet and in the space better should be able to make way for an ambulance stuck in a traffic jam or a kid trying to find new opportunities for herself in some part of our country. And the answer to that is not all that simple because it takes all of us. And sometimes it takes all that we've got to provide. I'll bring you back to that story of me being raised in a small village of Bihar. For the first 12 years of my life, I had not seen what a school looked like. Never been to a regular school. My father was posted in rural areas of Bihar. And we grew up reading newspapers. The quotations of Swami Vivekananda and great men and women of our times were stuck 
on the walls of the rented houses where we lived. Every morning when we woke up, me and my two siblings, we would read these quotations aloud in English and in Hindi. They were all about, you know, using your education, contributing to the nation, a lot of other things. So as a young kid, I grew up with a software almost within me that was about, you know, contributing, contributing and contributing. The second thing was that we had to read newspapers every day. Newspapers in these parts of my home state would come one day late. Every year, I would read at least three, four, five news stories of some kid who received a full scholarship to study at a top university across the world, some kid who had just represented India at an international forum, and some kid who had just won an international competition. I too wanted to, you know, win that scholarship, represent the country, or win an international competition, but I could not have done any of these things because I was not enrolled in a school. So I picked up a simple habit, and that was I began writing down whatever news story would come out. I would write down the name of the scholarship or the competition or the conference, the month in which the news story came out, who can participate and how. Fast forward that story, at the age of 12, I moved to the capital city of my home state with my mother and began attending school. By the time I was graduating high school, I had won close to 200 different local, national and international competitions and represented India in over six different countries.